You are currently looking at my <clears throat> preferred everyday carry setup. This is what I have with me uh, all the time with one item as an exception. <clears throat> First thing I have here is the Mini 400 Lumens Cree Q5 LED Zoomable Adjustable Focus Flashlight Torch with waterproof design. <laughs> it's a mouthful and uh, <clears throat> it really makes it sound awesome and expensive but it is the cheapest LED you can buy that is worth a crap. Um, it does not have 400 lumens that is uh, it doesn't the output is not that high that's a bunch of garbage. Uh, so lem let's just break down what's really going on. It has a Cree Q5 LED runs off a double A power cell. It has a zoomable I'm out of focus here. It has a zoomable uh, lens uh, that adjusts the way you're seeing me do it right now. Has a bright orange push button to activate. Um, I've been carrying this for <clears throat> a couple months now, and I do use my lights. I'm a construction worker, so I do use my lights pretty frequently at night when I'm moving stuff or when I need to get inside of a furnace or something like that and see what's going on in there. So I have used it quite a bit. I've ran down the battery once and reloaded so I do know the battery life is pretty decent but could be better but it's limited because it's using one double A so I don't really fault the light for that that's just uh, kinda how it is with regular everyday use of me messing around with it I think it lasted about a month and a half before I had to uh, replace the battery so let's get inside of it I apologize I don't have the don't have the uh, weight offhand let me see if the uh, website information has it so you take it out and it's kind of a messy situation here it has a little plastic guide thingy with a spring in it that is loose so you got to make sure that the uh, the spring part sits on top of the battery the plastic goes over it and then your little clicker piece goes on top of that and then it all just kind of falls in and that's all that's going on in there um, there's just a double A in there so Pop the spring in, pop the plastic over, push down, and there is an O-ring seal on this battery compartment. <clears throat> okay. Now that's all closed down. That's all there is to the light. Let's check out the throw. Um, so this is totally focused. This sucker's bright. Very, very bright. I wish I still had my Quark CR2 to compare it with, but that went through the laundry and died. So... <laughs> I decided not to spend another $30 on a light that I was going to wash and kill. So, uh, it's very bright focused and it has quite a range when it's focused like this. Pretty uh, pretty good range, probably 25 yards you can see as clearly as I'm seeing right here. Um, start to adjust the throw and it gets to be a searchlight. I mean this wall we're looking at right here is maybe uh, 4 feet away from the camera. So you really can't see how wide this is but you can light up a whole room when this thing is um, when the throw is uh, as wide as it goes. So, and that's as easy as it is to throw. Uh, it has multiple functions. So it starts off on bright, then goes to a lighter setting, then it goes strobe. And then it goes back to bright, light, strobe. So, uh, the reason I'm so excited about this flashlight is not because it's the best flashlight in the world, but it's a pretty darn good flashlight. And it's $8 shipped on Amazon that's the big thing it also does have a uh, clip here so you can pop it in your pocket and have it easily accessible the clip works well I actually like it a lot because it's not it's not so tough that it will rip your pants up or grab pieces of cotton with it but it will stay in your pocket so that is awesome boom and that is again on Amazon uh, maybe I'll put a link in the annotation because the actual name of it is that big long title uh, Mini 400 Lumens Cree Q5 maybe that keyword would bring it up but it's eight dollars and eighty cents with free super saver shipping if you order more than twenty five dollars I'm sure you guys know how that works on Amazon great buy so far I love this thing I uh, haven't taken it swimming or anything like that but so far it's great okay next thing I have here is the very sexual uh, Kershaw Cryo. Boom. It's assisted opening. I uh, was just opening it with a flipper. It also has uh, studs on the blade for actually probably a little quicker opening, but I don't like to use it as much. 
it is an 8 CR 13 MOV steel, um, which I'm kind of a fan of. In this scenario, it's coated this like almost Parker looking color, and it's matched the handle. Um, let me grab. Where's that thing? Oh, here. Here's the Kershaw Oso oh Sweet. If you'll notice, the tip is missing. <laughs> And uh, I use my knives. I'm just going to say that up front. I use them a lot. Like I said, I'm in construction. This knife has actually uh, cut drywall, um, not in a serrated sense, but I will just stab here, stab here, stab here, stab here to kind of weaken the drywall and then just kind of punch it out if I'm doing a cutout. So um, this this is done drywall. It has cut carpet. It has done all sorts of stuff. And the tip has been snapped off because I was um, using it as a flathead screwdriver to... Um, I believe I was doing electrical work and I was trying to unscrew a wire out of a breaker and I snapped it. So HCR 13 MOV, I have actually, and you might be like, oh man, that's probably the only knife you've ever done that to. Nope. Uh, I have actually tried the same um, thing with uh, OS 8 steel, uh, with a Camelus OS 8 that I'll show you guys in a different video. And... Um, it did not snap. So uh, I think HCR 13 MOV, just in my experience, is a little bit more brittle. Um, steel is steel. It all dulls. I've never met a steel that you could just cut through cardboard all day long and still be sharp. It's not going to happen. So I could kind of care less about the steel if you know how to sharpen your knives and do it frequently. So HCR 13 MOV is fine. It does rust, I think. Um, no, I know. So it has rusted on here. So uh, this coating is kind of nice over the blade, so you're not going to get that so much. So keep your knife sharp. If you don't have a sharpener and you have a bunch of knives, step your game up. You know what I mean? Go get a sharpener. I have a video of a super cheap sharpener. If you don't have confidence in like your ability to sharpen stuff and it's intimidating to just get a stone or something, go get that rod sharpener that I have a review for. I think it's the, uh, I forget what it's called. It's a turn crock sharpener. It's in a wooden box. Anyways, just go. It's cheap. It's like 17 bucks or something like that. And, um... You can you can really learn how to sharpen a blade well with that, you know, just for starters. And if you want something better later, go get something better. Uh, it's just a low risk investment. So, uh, what else is there to say about this thing? It has jimping on the top here. It's not very aggressive. It's kind of rounded. It's not uh, it's not going to grind in your thumb, which I wish it would. Uh, jimping down here doesn't make any sense. Kind of, it doesn't really contact you in a very meaningful way. The steel handle here is slippery so it doesn't have great traction this is a sexy sexy sexual blade <laughs> that's the way i'm gonna put it i freaking love this knife not because it's the most uh high traction awesome work blade but because it's a real bonerific blade and i like to carry it even though it's heavier because this is a uh, steel handle solid steel handle so it is going to be a little heavier i think it's like four ounces um than this little plasticky thing but this isn't quite as sexy is it you know it's a satin steel and plastic and very typical of what Kershaw is normally doing so this is kind of nice I vowed to not cut carpet and drywall with this and this is just going to be my fondling knife all right next on my everyday carry this is uh some paracord bracelet I made this is a what is what the guy who made this is calling a millipede um, on one side and this is a ladder weave on the other side so I actually made two different bracelets that I ended up wearing together and wanted them to stay more firm and this is the first attempt at me ever doing a paracord bracelet so please don't be too critical and it just has a uh, loop and knot on each one of these so I made a millipede bracelet and then I made a ladder bracelet and then I just took some paracord and weave them together uh, each one of these bracelets is one solid piece. I've seen some different methods where you make, uh, you cut these in two, uh, you cut two different pieces to make one of these bracelets, and I would just make a loop and use one piece so you actually have usable paracord if you ever want to use these. I probably have maybe 40 feet of paracord in this, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's around 30 to 40 feet. So that's the next thing I wear daily. Uh, last thing is my Glock 17. Uh, my loaded mag is over here. I'm not going to unload my magazine for anybody, but uh, this isn't a two-tone. This is a standard Glock that I got from a uh, local gun shop used for like 320 bucks or something. It's a Gen 2, I believe, and I uh, dirt-coated the slide uh, flat dark earth. 
Pretty cool. It's in good shape, firing shape. It was just a little worn from carry. Uh, I left all of the internals completely stock in here. I know I normally trick out my Glock on the inside, but I don't even think I polished this. If I did, I didn't do it very heavily. So uh, it's pretty stock. I didn't really want a crazy trigger pull for my um, carry gun. I'm carrying it in a Kydex Blade Tech outer waistband holster. And I really like this setup because uh, in my state, in Michigan, open carry is completely legal. You don't have to keep it concealed. So I keep it on my hip and I will, I'll pull my uh, uh, shirt down, you know, to try and cover it if I can. But if it pops out, I don't really care. So it's not that big of a burden for me to carry a full-size Glock, whereas some people can't do that and they need to have a completely concealed pocket gun. Uh, it's cold here a lot too, so when you have a jacket or sweatshirt on, it's completely concealed. At least to here, and no one assumes, if you're not looking for a gun, no one assumes that this black thing sticking down is a gun. They don't see the handle, they don't see any of the top part. It's just a, you know, cell phone case to them or something. Um, this is the one thing that I said in the beginning gets left behind every now and then. And it's the truth. Even though I have a outer waistband comfortable carry way, um, comfortable means to carry it, there's always a time for a good pocket pistol, which I am uh, going to invest in very soon because my wife has a Ruger LCP, and as often as I can, I slip that in my pocket, but she needs to carry it, so that's not very often. Unless we're together, you know, she's got it. So uh, I'm going to probably look into a kel PF9 or uh, maybe a Ruger LC9. I'm not sure. I really need to investigate more. But this is my everyday carry. Uh, it's a... I like just the base of having, a, you know, this is kind of cool, just looks cool, and it's not probably not necessary in everyday life, but nice to have some paracord. Um, the light comes in handy the most frequently, um, the knife second most frequently, and the gun uh, has not come into use yet in my everyday carry system. But these are uh, three good things to have, just a good torch, a good knife, and a good gun.